Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor right now and subscribe to our YouTube channel here at Watchbox Reviews. I'd really appreciate it, and I'd be able to send watches like this to your inbox on a daily basis. And if you like our watches, this one included, you can buy them on our website, thewatchbox.com, buy, trade, and sell luxury watches 24 hours a day on thewatchbox.com. We have a special piece in the house. This is the first Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Tourbillon that I have ever showcased on the channel, and I'm raring to go. Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Tourbillon in stainless steel, technically referenced 26510ST. This 41mm Tourbillon debuted at SIHH 2012, the year of the 41mm Royal Oak, but it is just as slim, elegant, timeless, and classically proportioned as any standard 15400, and let's see why that is. On my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it wears like every Royal Oak, which is to say bigger than its nominal size, but flat. So 41 millimeters from 9 to 3, not including the crown, the watch is relatively slim as I measured it at a nice compact 8.9 millimeters. That's only 0.6 millimeters thicker than the Jumbo. You want more? You got it. It is broad. Lug to lug, this is where a Royal Oak or an Offshore will really stretch its wings. The watch measures 51 millimeters lug to lug across the wrist, and you can see my wrist is more oval than flat. That's 16 centimeters. Measure the inflexible outermost portions of the bracelet, these double plots. You can see these intermediate links that join the bracelet to the case. And now you actually find that the span is 54 millimeters across the wrist. So very flat, but the watch does wear large for its size. Think of it more as a 42 or a 43. In terms of feel, Peerless. Audemars Piguet knows how to make a bracelet. That's really the key to this watch's wrist feel. It's broad and flat, but the bracelet is a masterstroke. First, the finish. When you buy a Royal Oak or an Offshore, even if you buy it in something like carbon or ceramic, you're getting fine finish, hand finish, traditional finish. You can see the tapered bevel that expands from the mid case swells over the lug hood and then continues perfectly aligned across the diminishing links of the bracelet. Now you can feel one smooth continuous sweep, though you see a curve, you don't feel the step from link to link as it tapers. That's how precise the tolerances are. You'll also note when I start to bend the bracelet that you see the polished highlights on the edge of each of the intermediate links. So there's polish where you can barely even see it. No stone left unturned. Turn the watch on its flank and you can see that rather than using a longitudinal satin finish, it's actually vertical, different and desirable. The satin is longitudinal on the tops. Turn it over, Again, it continues to impress. You can see plenty of daylight, my baseboard shining through. This allows the wrist to vent on a hot day, and the channels between the links avoid pinching skin or pulling hair. Patek, take note. Removable, sizable links, fixed with screws, not spring bars. This is how it should be on every luxury watch priced over a grand. Audemars Piguet's latest double folding deployment clasp, tougher than before, more substantial than before, still low in profile, it's no dive clasp when closed. The AP is your partition point, the twin triggers ensure that it is not friction fit, nor is it fit with a cheap clamshell. You must press both triggers to release this one, and it's nicely finished with media blasted and satin interior. Going back to the case, we're going to look at some of the highlights of a Royal Oak. You'll note that the crease of the semi-octagonal bezel continues perfectly aligned and tapered from the flank of the bezel through the mid-case through the case back. Nicely done. There's that hairline sliver of the functional bezel gasket. It is a sealing mechanism, but it's also a subtle styling element of the Royal Oak. It swells to giant proportions on the offshore. Here it's an accent, not dominant feature. You'll note that the faceting and the full metal of the lug hoods helps to define the transition of the bracelet. And really, Gerald Genta, the creator of the Royal Oak as well as the Nautilus, was a jewelry designer first and foremost. He designed an order of magnitude more jewelry than watches, and he always preferred to infuse his watch designs with elements from jewelry rather than the other way around, and thus the Royal Oak on a bracelet, as God, or I should say, GG intended, looks more like an article of male fashion than a timepiece, but make no mistakes, 
its horological chops are unquestioned. So moving inboard, you can see that classic octagonal bezel, originally inspired by the porthole of a British Royal Navy warship, combination of curves and hard creases, satin and polish, and the inset white gold hexagonal bezel bolts. They have a counter-threaded screw that actually runs into them on the underside. They're not threaded in and then perfectly aligned. They sink in that way. They should always be recessed below the plane of the bezel. We can get a little closer now that the watch is off the wrist, but they should always be below the plane of the bezel. They should always be slightly recessed. When they become flush with the bezel, that's AP's internal threshold for replacement. You can see this one's in excellent condition. The dial is the Petite Tapisserie in blue, created on a 19th century pantograph machine. It essentially takes a giant scale model of the dial and then transcribes that exact pattern, including its tiny ripples of interstitial texture, onto a smaller template, and that becomes the dial of the watch. The Pantograph, a 19th century engine, always used to create the Royal Oak dials, but since 2012 done in-house by AP. Yes, white gold indices in hands, there will be a loom shot, but you'll note that the dial is unadorned, it's clean. It's easy to read. The watch works as a timepiece, first and foremost, with a combination of the blue tapisserie and the steel, absolutely versatile. Welcome for any occasion in any attire. Now, the timepiece does have an Audemars Piguet manufactured tourbillon caliber, and blazing at 6 o'clock is the titular tourbillon. So this is the raison d'etre for this model. Absolutely gorgeous. This is the dial facing side of caliber 2924 manual wind 70 hour power reserve the reason it's not running is because i thought you might want to watch this watch come to life let's get super close here watching a tourbillon jump into action is for me one of the the true pleasures of high horology. Now this one has a 70 hour power reserve manually wound, so it takes quite a good deal of encouragement to fire up the mechanism. Just so you can see what's happening, My bad. There's actually a power reserve scale on the case back. I should mention that you do need to engage the first clutch detent to wind this watch. Now that we're up and running, you can see that it is absolutely gorgeous. The movement itself features a black polished tourbillon bridge, a free sprung balance to take a precise regulation and hold it against bumps and concussion on the wrist. It's not a shock-resistant watch, but the free-sprung architecture is more durable. It also features a Breguet overcoil hairspring so that it will beat concentrically in any position. The tourbillon, not ideal for a wristwatch designed for pocket watches. With the addition of the overcoil and adjustment in five positions, this watch takes on the ability to keep excellent time in any position with respect to gravity, regaining the original design aims of the tourbillon mechanism. You'll also note black poly polished tourbillon bridge, as well as a black polished and continuously rounded set of spokes about the tourbillon cage. The tourbillon carriage itself is made of titanium on this watch. You'll also note the side saddle, sort of lateral escapement. It's not a conventional inline Swiss lever to reduce the total diameter of the tourbillon assembly. And you can see on the case back that tiny power reserve scale I mentioned. It is a beautifully finished movement that has black polish on the reverse side tourbillon bridge as well. In case you're wondering, yes, this is executed to a higher standard than something like a 15400 or an offshore 26470. AP does have several levels of finish like Gerard Perigot, like Zenith, like Gégère Lecoult, and a movement like this that sits at the absolute top of the range with mirrored anglage on the edge of every bridge as well as every jewel sink, beautifully laid abrasive wheel Cote de Genève, not stamped, black polished screw heads with chamfered slots, and of course, black polished bridges. This is a cut above, this is a step beyond. It beats away, 
at three hertz or 21,600 vibrations per hour. And as you can see, it's got a stately cadence to it that makes for handsome viewing an absolute pleasure. This is the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Tourbillon. And we're back with the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Tourbillon 26510ST. As you can see, it is a full-fledged sports watch in the dark, plenty luminescent to read the time at any hour. It also retains the standard 15400's 50 meter water resistance, though it has a push down crown. Nevertheless, water resistance does not suffer relative to the mainstream model. You can see this one by the light of day on our website.